How's it going guys, it's Chucky here. Before this video starts, I do just want to say that I am a little bit sick at the moment, so if my voice and my mic quality doesn't sound that good, then that's the reason. I'd also like to mention that because I've been growing so much recently, I want to give back to you guys a little bit, so I'm doing a bit of a giveaway for some Hypixel stuff. I'll be doing one giveaway on YouTube and one giveaway on Twitter, so make sure to stick around to the end of the video for more information on that. But apart from that, I hope you enjoy the video, and I'll see you later. I've talked before about the super rare capes that Mojang gave to members of the community. These of course have tons of history behind them, but at this point, it's all kind of old news. Recently, there has been a massive update in terms of capes. In my last video about the Mojang capes, I mentioned how Optifine capes were accessible by anybody with the mod installed and willing to donate a few dollars. But what if I told you that this wasn't entirely the case? In the last couple of weeks, people have discovered custom Optifine capes that barely anybody knows about, given to only three people in all of Minecraft. Just days after they were discovered, players found secret exploits in order to get the cape for themselves. In this video, I'll talk about these exploits, who the capes are owned by, and even the huge amounts of drama that they created, alongside much more. I even had exclusive interviews with all three of these owners of the capes, so make sure to watch the whole video to see all of this. I also added timestamps in the video description in case you wanted to skip through like that, but without further ado, please make sure to like and subscribe and enjoy the video. I won't spend too much time on the background information for this one, as most of you will know what Optifine capes are. They've been around for years now, and are seen by almost anyone that plays multiplayer to any extent. They're also shown on NameMC next to the official Mojang capes. Regardless though, this all boils down to meaning that if there ever was a way to get a fully custom and unique Optifine cape, they would be incredibly sought after. But as you may know, very recently, this became a reality. Way back in 2019, people discovered that a player by the name of Eskimojo14 had a high definition, personalised Optifine cape with his name and the BD Craft logo on it. I managed to get in contact with Esky himself and asked him a few questions via DM. He essentially stated that at the time, he worked for BDCraft, a company affiliated with Optifine that made quality of life mods and texture packs for the game. At one point out of the blue, Esky Mojo asked SP, the developer of Optifine, if there was a possibility of high definition capes, and let him use his account to test it out on. He handed over a design that he'd made previously, and it was uploaded. Seeing as it worked with no issues, SP saw no reason not to let him keep it, but kept it relatively private. This meant that Esky really didn't get many comments on it, other than just people saying it was pretty cool. But sadly, around a year later, this all changed. Seemingly out of nowhere, a user by the name of FileFolder3 received the second of these personalised capes around two weeks ago, as of when this video was uploaded. The cape has a green graph-like design on it, and soon got a skin to fit it. I again got in contact with File, and it turns out that he was an active member of the Optifine Discord, and actually made graphs related to things such as the progress of Optifine updates, and the lifespan of each update over time. Yeah, he made, he made graphs of, like, various data related to Optifine, like how long it was taking to update different versions, and yeah, oh, it had to do with the progress. Okay. And now he's doing even more graphs of different things, like how long each version usually takes to update and all that stuff. It's it's really interesting to look at. And finally, the last cape belongs to GCK... GC... Wow. And finally, the last cape belongs to JCKT. They will be referring to him as Jack from now on. This one was also given two weeks ago on February the 13th, the same day as file, just slightly later in the day. He was awarded it by SP, similar to the others, but this time for being a moderator and admin in the community Discord server. He was also the person who created the moderation bot that is used in the Optifine Discord server. And when I got in contact with him, he said that that was the reasoning for the design of his cape too. Yeah, it's the curly brackets. Um, well, I, I just made it because like it, it sort of reflects my my overall love for things like technology and now programming. Uh, like, you know, the Discord bot that we have on our Discord server. As it turns out, adding a cape like this isn't nearly as simple as it sounds. It's assumed that SP had to go into the databases and add them in separately, but as I couldn't get in contact with him, it's difficult to tell. The way he actually gets these custom capes added, he told me it's a bit of a hacky process, like custom capes aren't really supposed to exist. This alongside websites like NameMC also having to add the cape ended up causing a few issues. For starters, in the actual game, both Jack and Files capes have custom Elytra skins. One of them is very similar to the actual cape, and the other is a set of amazing looking Phoenix wings. But oddly enough, when me and all three of the cape owners were together getting footage for this video, we found out that Esky's cape just didn't have an Elytra model. When he put one on, it just didn't show anything there, not even the default texture. This is assumed to be because the cape was just a test feature for HD capes, rather than any sort of gift, so the Elytra texture was just looked over. However, Esky had made the texture at around the same time as the cape, so it's really just a question of when it'll be fixed. Then, there was the issues that NameMC encountered. When Files cape was added, there must have been some sort of differences with the sizing and dimensions of it, as it was shown being zoomed in on the top left corner. Jack actually told me a little about this, and he said that, 
The file cape is 4 times standard resolution of Optifine capes. Before the fix, NameMT generally seemed to assume that Optifine capes would be one of two sizes. Standard Optifine capes, which are the same resolution as Minecon capes, and Banner capes, which are twice the resolution of Optifine or Minecon capes. As it turns out, this was an issue for Esky's cape as well. His cape was completely messed up for a while on NameMC, but since no one really knew about it, nobody ever fixed it. Eventually though, Fael contacted NameMC and got it fixed. But oddly enough, the time coincides to when all the Minecon capes on MMC had the exact opposite happen to them, and were seen to take up half of the cape, with both sides viewable on the back. This ended up being fixed pretty quickly, but it's interesting to note how many small problems adding these capes made. The first real discovery of these capes happened around a week ago, when Fire logged on to Blockmania to claim his name MC account. He said, after I was AFK, I realised that everyone there had a cool name and a Minecon cape, and everyone was admiring mine as if it was the rarest thing in the game. This of course is because it literally almost is the rarest thing in the game. This image is of the first time Fire logged into Blockmania, and you can see how many people were crowded around him to see it. I, I couldn't even comprehend, like, the amount of attention I was getting for a few days. It was... it was unbelievable. I, I didn't know how to process it. The same thing happened when I managed to get all three of these accounts together and brought them onto Blockmania myself. There was plenty of people that were just interested to see these capes, but of course, there was people who wanted them for themselves. So similar to most rare account owners now, both Jack and File started to get DMs asking them to sell their accounts. They each had offers of up to $1,000 in the first day, and both PayPal and Bitcoin payments. Both of them refused all these offers, and then started to get messages asking how they could get their own cape. 10 people DM'd me, adding me on Discord. They were asking, oh, can I have a custom cape, please? They were asking things like, oh, how'd you get your cape? How do I get a custom cape? Can you ask SB to make me a custom cape? I was getting that, like, every day, and I, I think I'm still getting those. So, like all things in this community, after people realised that they couldn't get them with money, they decided to try other methods, one of which worked all too well. As I said, once people found out that they weren't getting the accounts for money, they immediately started looking for ways to get it for themselves. Of course, certain users that I've mentioned in previous videos took to threatening Jack and File and trying to hack their accounts. When this didn't work, they looked for exploits in Optifine itself, and it didn't take long to figure something out. The exploit that was eventually found is possibly the easiest one in Minecraft's history. It was as simple as changing a line of HTML in the customized cape page using inspect element from standard to jckt or graph underscore guy, which was File's nickname in the Optifine community. Once one person found out about this exploit, it spread like wildfire. There were screenshots of one person with the cape, then two, then five. People even started to sell the method to each other for up to $200 and even sold accounts with the cape. Eventually, someone who wishes to remain anonymous bought this method and told Jack about it. It was then immediately given to SP who fixed the exploit. After this, people started to lose the exploited capes, and some people even lost their Optifine cape entirely. It has been confirmed that all of these lost capes will be reactivated at some point, and that no one has ever been blocked for this exploit. So in terms of these capes, what's the future for them? SB has made it incredibly clear that he will not be making any more of these custom capes. After giving Jack his, he made sure to stress that any request for more will be ignored. Yeah, he, he said himself uh, that he's not going to make any more custom capes. These three that are already in circulation, those are going to be the only three capes ever. This didn't stop people asking though. Jack, File, and Esky have all been getting streams of DMs asking for their own cape. So much so to where Jack even created an FAQ sheet he just pasted as a reply. Eventually though, Jack had had enough. He mentioned repeatedly to me that he'd never had this much attention, and that it was starting to get overwhelming. Him and File were getting repeatedly harassed and messaged by well-known members of the toxic side of this community, and it got to the point where Jack was considering getting his cape removed by SP, or even at one point, thought about deleting his account entirely. Luckily, many of the positive members of the community did manage to talk him out of this. I also talked to a few people and friends within the community about these capes before I got in contact with the owners, and they were very interested to see if they knew about the OG community or how much these accounts were worth. Do you guys know, like, the sort of value of the accounts that you have now with these added things? Or do you just, like, see this as just, like, a cool extra cosmetic? I, re I really just want to see it as, like, oh yeah, I just have this cool thing on my Minecraft account, but I have gotten several offers for people to, like, buy my cape. People really want me to just sell it off. I've, I've gotten, like, offers as high as, like, a thousand dollars for this account. As it turns out, none of them really played much multiplayer at all, and Eskimojo had all but quit the game. And before I got in touch with them, none of them had really heard about what OG names were, but Jack and File seemed interested when I talked to them about it, and they even went as far to join the OG Nation Discord to learn more about the community. But when it comes to the value of accounts, again, they really had no idea until they started to get the messages. Starting with offers of $300, then $500, all the way up to $1,000 for the accounts. Thankfully though, they declined all of them. 
Had they have accepted any of them, their accounts would have been sold around the market incredibly fast and likely eventually locked by Mojang. And had SP heard about this, the capes would likely be removed immediately, and he'd likely even kick the seller from the Optifine Discord. I do find it pretty crazy how much history was made just in the last two weeks that these capes have really been around. There's been so much drama and content that came that no one really even saw coming. But anyway, at the start of this video, I mentioned that I'll be doing two giveaways, one on YouTube and one on Twitter. The one that I'll be doing here on YouTube, all you have to do is subscribe, like the video, and comment your IGN. And to the winner, I'll be giving away a network booster of your choice. You can choose from any of them, apart from the Mega Walls one, the Sky Wars one, and the Blitz one. And on Twitter, I'll be giving away two of these little guys. You can choose between any of the dogs, the HP8 one, the Frog, the Panda, or the Duck Companion. There'll be two winners for this one, and all you have to do to enter is to go to the tweet that I've linked in the description below, like and retweet the post, and follow me on Twitter. But apart from that, I really do hope you enjoyed the video. It was great to talk to Jack, File, and Eskimo about everything, so I really hope that you enjoyed it as well. But apart from that, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.